Okay, today we've got uh, a, a genuine demonstration of thermocompensation. I think uh, it's time to do this. Uh, and for this, I've selected three watches, all Asians. Um, let me, the first one here is a Seiko Grand Court. Uh, the most expensive of the lot. Uh, even used, it's the most expensive of the lot. This uh, is a 70 vintage uh, uh, watch. It's got uh, uh, thermal compensation, one of uh, uh, Seiko's first attempts at it, I believe. Uh, and it's done by twin crystals. So you measure, uh, they both operate at different frequencies, and you measure uh, how they react to temperature and shoot it and correct it. Uh, this is uh, a Citizen Exceed and a wonderful watch. I, I think this is one of the finest watches uh, made by humanity yet. And uh, just uh, for grins, a Chinese Seagull Quartz. Uh, let's get some close-ups on these. Uh, Seagull's pretty rare in the States. Uh, I didn't even know they made quartz watches until uh, I found this one from uh, one of my vendors in uh, um, Hong Kong. And, of course, the Exceed and the Twin Quartz. Uh, I'm so, or the Grand Quartz, excuse me. I'm, I'm told that, uh, that that symbol underneath tells you which plant made this. Uh, let's take a look at the movements. Um, the movement of the seagull is uh, very Russian-like, uh, which may be because <laughs> the Russians helped them do it. Um, clearly uh, an early quartz watch, probably 80s vintage. Uh, that uh, screw right there is the trimmer capacitor. And we'll see how accurate this is in uh, part two. Uh, the Exceed, I've never had the back off of, never needed to. It's a wonderful watch, and uh, it's, um, you know, well, it'll be our reference. And here is the Twin Quartz, adjusted to temperature. You see one quartz crystal, another quartz crystal. And that screw right there is the trimmer capacitor. Only older quartz watches have these things. Um, and you will find that uh, they make uh, getting things quite accurate quite easy. Uh, the tool that we'll be using here is a Citizen uh, quartz tester, a, a CQT-101, uh, no longer available. Um, the only information I could find was uh, was uh, some stuff on the web from Japan where somebody had re-imported one from the States. Um, and it uses a little thing here. Let's, let's start with the seagull. And, you know, you can see that it's pulling a signal down here, we're sampling for 10 seconds, and then we'll, we will get a time. A 10 second time sample isn't a lot of samples, and um, you'll see some variance in the last significant digit, but uh, you see that this one is accurate uh, after I trimmed it up to, uh, well, you know, essentially uh, dead on at this temperature. What is this temperature? Well, 80 degree, 83 degrees. Uh, a little cooler than what it would be on your wrist, but it's um, it's a hot day here in Columbus. So essentially what this is saying is, is that if you leave it at this temperature, it will operate uh, uh, about four seconds a day, four seconds a year fast. Let's get a little time on the Seiko. Get the Seiko on there. Starting to do a sample. Uh, you notice uh, that there's one of those. The Casio made those watches. Well, it turns out they also made they also made uh, alarm clocks. 
Uh, the first sample you sometimes have to ignore because it may not have gotten a full sample. But let's see if we're having... Oh, uh, one of the problems with this watch is that... Ah, there we go. Six seconds a day. You, you, you generally have to have the back on on, on this Seiko. Uh, the capacitance added by the back seems to have some effect on this. Um, and we'll see what this is. This is a Hamilton. This is a thermocompensated Omega. Just got this one in. Can't quite wear it yet. The branch looks a little small. Oh. And here is uh, a Tog Heuer Aqua Graph. Good to a thousand meters. Uh, okay, let's see what we're getting here. Let's see if this thing will sample. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, 600 to the second day slow, which is uh, in 100 days you would get 6 seconds slow. Um, so uh, that would be around oh, 18 seconds a, a year. And you notice that the last digit is bouncing. We could do 60 second samples, but uh, not, um, it takes too long. Uh, and this, this is what the setup is going to be. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing the temperature. Uh, and we're going to uh, take some component spray. And we're going to spray it uh, on the watch and cool the watch. And you will get to see how this affects the, the timekeeping of uh, thermocompensated and non-thermocompensated watches. Uh, since there's a 10-minute uh, limit, you get to go to YouTube 2 to see this one. Uh, this is the ending part one of thermocompensation, a demonstration.